actually removed a amulet from PvP, and I have an old uh, Guardian melee healer, kind of a bunker healer build I ran just for goofball mode in PvE for a long time. I even played it in PvP. It was pretty fun in PvP. In one-on-one -on -one situation, you're pretty much unkillable unless someone's really, really good at like understanding when to CC you or do an interrupt or knockback. Like someone playing a Revenant with that uh, dragon build, all that kind of business. And there's a couple of people I had trouble with. But this is him in, in PvE. I wanted to run through this build real quick because a few people have been talking about healing. I know that Muckluck was making a Ranger video talking about healing as well. So I thought I'd just run through this real quick. So in essence, what it is is a um, hammer and, uh, well, mace technically, mace and shield guardian. With And I'll run through the whole build. So she's using um, precision vitality, healing power, Concentration, boon duration, and transference, healing other allies increased by 10%. And the offhand is a staff. Now, the staff is really only just like an area effect healing thing. You would never really ever use this except in a really, really, really bad situation to cast area effect heal because you're totally vulnerable because you can't block. So in PvP, the thing that was really nasty about this build was you're blocking all the time. So you can see right here this healing power was 1,439. Another thing very interesting about this is when you're playing Guardian as DPS, you're you're doing all kinds of stuff, do tons of damage and dot damage, and throwing little spinning swords on the ground. I mean, you see my uh, you see my uh, fiery elemental is having to dodge roll out of that crap all the time. This build's all about retaliation. All right, let's just go through the build real quick, and then uh, before I go through the build here, let's go compare real quick what happened in Pv PvP. In PvP, I used to have a different amulet, and they had a thousand healing power. But it doesn't show up here, so let me go into the mist so you can see that first. Let's go here. Let's just take a minute to load. Which is really weird, because it was a build I made, I don't know, a year or so ago, and it was really fun. Every now and then I just go in there and be a dork and structure PvP and be unkillable and heal people and putting walls down. I was just being like a team player. I wasn't trying to get kills like I am on the other account, um, on the other character. So in this situation, you come into here, and like, okay, let's see what those stats are now. 675. <laughs> so if you remember a minute ago, it was like 4, uh, 1451. This is all the way down. This is like almost a thousand uh, reduction. And because of that, they took away this amulet, which I forgot the darn name of it. There's no other, there's either an amulet, like this one that has additional condition damage. The other one is like something with a uh, crit, which is pretty useless. Let me see if I can find it. It's not Avatar. Avatar has a little bit of healing power. Power, precision, vitality, healing power. So you get more crit. So you have that one for more crit, or you can have this one that has more condition damage. I actually chose to just go with the condition damage because the healing had been so nerfed. I'm like, okay, well, at least the damage I do with the dot damage is going to last a little longer. Anyway, let's get to the build real quick. And let me move away from all this uh, noisy whoop to do. We'll go over here because everyone likes to jump around and wig out in that area. There we go. And then we'll do some... Uh, killing of the NPCs and let you see how it is and at the end I'll go jump in a match and get destroyed for fun so it's basically valor honor and virtues why okay let's go through valor first so gaining aegis when you're struck while below a health threshold so aegis means you block the next incoming attack that makes a, a big difference because you're doing a lot of blocking that heals yourself and allies and you're doing a lot of blocking that's causing retaliation and you're doing a lot of blocking so it's nullifying damage so um if you get hit at all below 50% health, you're going to automatically block. And for five seconds, it, it's going to put that buff on you. So say you get hit and someone hits you just once and you're still running around for five seconds, you still have this free buff on your ship, this Aegis buff. The next one is this lose conditions every interval. This one's really, really amazing. You'll have conditions on you. You're just running around and you just remove the condition. The de uh, degeneration decreases by 33%. That's really great. It's a passive. It doesn't do anything except keep these conditions off of you. Gain protection when you block an incoming attack with Aegis. So as you can start to see, this is all about blocking with the shield, right? So once you get, if you get hit below 50% health, or these other methods, you're gonna see the builder where you block and you can force yourself to block as well, you're gonna get 33% reduced incoming damage. That's really, really nasty. Now, it's not as cool as the Elementalist Earth Stance that I play where you can uh, make yourself uncritable. I don't think there's anything in the Guardian build that makes yourself uncritable. If there is, please tell me because I'll use that right away. But this is great. 33% reduction in everyone's damage hitting you when Aegis goes off, when you block an incoming attack. This next one is here. Blocking an attack grants Aegis to nearby allies. So if I block once 
<laughs> it happens all the time. All five allies in a decent radius around me. It's got a 15 second kind of cooldown. You know, there's an internal cooldown. They're going to block the next incoming attack. If you watch me play my uh, um, Soul Beast Ranger Joker the other day with his magic axes, you see I will shoot a white swing first at people on other team before I start using my hard hitting abilities because I want to drop that guardian five second Aegis that pulses all the time, right? And then this next one here, you gain might when you block an attack. Well, you know, you're not a DPSer. This is probably the lowest DPS build I've ever played. And who knows what it's going to be like now that the condition damage is boosted. So every time you're blocking an attack, you're gaining might, which means more condition damage, but it also meant more power. So two stacks of that is going to mean your heals are going to go up as well. And then lastly, heal yourself when you grant a boon to an ally. Well, you granted a boon to an ally when you blocked. So then you're going to heal yourself. So a little bit of passive healing. Let's get on this next one, honor. In this honor tree, you gain vigor when you critically strike. Now, you're not critically striking a lot. There's other things in this line that's more useful. But, hey, if it happens to crit, let's see what your crit number is. It's probably insignificant. Yeah, it's five. So this isn't, this isn't why you're picking this. Increase your healing to other allies each time you block an attack. So we're blocking an attack. We're putting Aegis on ourselves and our allies. And every time uh, we do that, uh, we're increasing the amount of healing they're going to get. May skills re uh, gain reduced recharge, which is fantastic because you're going to be using this down here a lot, Symbol of Faith. But we'll go over that after we get done with the talent tree. So, Invigorated Bulwark, 20 seconds. 2% increased healing to others. Maximum stacks, 5. Recharge reduce, reduced by 20%. Duration increased 30%. That's just making that more effective across the board. The end of your dodge roll heals nearby allies. So interesting enough, when you're playing this class, you're not dodge rolling a lot. You actually are running up and just kind of planting yourself on someone and, and melee swinging and hitting them and hitting them and hitting them with this white swing. If they're not hitting you, you're just doing this the whole time. If someone around you is taking damage, you're going to end up putting this ability down on the ground too, which also does nasty damage to them. So this is kind of interesting because if you see how this is written out, if you do have to dodge roll, you're going to get a little heal and your whole team. So if you've got a teammate that's getting killed and you go in there and just roll into him with a dodge roll, you're going to heal him. And then you start doing your rotation to try to help him out. Aegis heals when it blocks an attack. So you can start seeing Aegis healing, healing to your allies, grant Aegis to your allies, remove conditions for your allies. This stuff is very selfless, right? Your Virtue Skill 2 passive also generates endurance. So these are three Virtue Skills down here, right? One is the Virtue of Justice, which is a, a dot, okay? But you're never going to turn these on. You're going to leave them turned off all the time. You never turn them on at all. The second one's going to give you passive healing. If you are a super pro player, you might be like, hey, I'm going to go ahead and activate this real quick. Well, you're going to wait 25 seconds. That 25 seconds is gone. So this endurance regeneration is going to be gone while that's on cooldown. I found that it's not worth it to be a cooldown popper with this build, that you have plenty of other things to do here and plenty of other things to do here to be helping your team. Lastly, symbols are improved and healed allies. This is a symbol of faith, right? This is not, right? This is the only thing you have that's a symbol. I don't believe there's anything in here that's a symbol either, is there? There's a symbol there. It's a swiftness one. That's not a symbol. I wish it was. So this here is your really great... Uh, heal, air effect, point blank, fixed location heal. So this is going to be more effective. Lastly, under the virtues line, you have this virtues apply boons to allies when activated. So you could do this if you wanted to be totally selfless. I have found a lot of times I don't click these at all. I'll leave them just ticking in the background. But you could click these like this and put boons to everyone. So what that will do is this. Virtues apply boons to allies when activated, but it only lasts five and a half seconds. And they get more condition damage, more power, they get a heal, they get 33% incoming damage. So you could turn the tide of a three versus three fight. If someone's in there like a, a Reaper starts air affecting everyone, you could you could click you could do that if you want to have 20 seconds of downtime on those things. Next, gain retaliation when you activate a virtue. Um, this is re retaliation is reflecting a damage to its source. I use that a lot in my Earth Stance, my Elementalist. It's used a lot here on demand in this build as well, um, especially with this. So this is going to block the next incoming attacks. This gives you uh, damage reflect as well. This is give you a little knockback and a heal you can do on, de on demand. This gives you protection and Aegis as well. Next one. Um, so anytime you are getting a Aegis going off, you're going to you're going to heal. 
Uh, your Virtue 2 skill passive it generates endurance. We talked about that already. Oh, we're down here. Sorry. Um, next one. Activating Virtue skill 2 removes conditions of nearby allies. So this is kind of a, a group condi cleanse, as people would call it. Uh, so that's pretty nice. This is number two, which is the healing one. So you, it gives everyone regeneration. It gives uh, this little heal here. It has retaliation. That, if you're going to pop anything, it'd be nice to pop that one. Because um, when you do that, also, it's going to give you uh, this uh, 467 heal and 50% endurance regeneration. I haven't been playing popping a lot. Eh, I'm not very pro with this class, but it's very funny. Deal increased damage for each boon on you. So if you have a lot of boons on you, you do more damage. Your recharge reduced. It doesn't really matter. Nearby allies gain passive effect of virtue skill too. So if you are running around and you haven't blown this passive effect, they're going to gain this uh, uh, passive going off all the time. Now let's talk about the um, these abilities. This is just a good old white swing. Let's just go up here and do some white swings. It'll be a little noisy. In fact, there's a lot of people here, but whatever. So you can see the damage on this is not going to be awesome. Like, looks like this thing to respond to quick. See that pulsing? I'm in combat. That pulsing is removing any conditions. It pulses whether there's a condition to be removed or not. Now you can see the purple damage is always going to be dot to condition damage, and the orange damage is going to be non-crit kind of attacks from this one. Notice that the very last one does 800 damage and does 705 healing is bolstered by my statistics and hits up to five ally targets, right? So this is why this is useful. You're doing this all the time in combat. And the last hit is the one that's going to heal people. And you can even see a little 286 burning dot. Let's put on the medium guy. Wait. See this big, large blue circle that popped? That pulse there? That's cleansing stuff off of you. So that's a 1,000 strike for, I guess, a chumpy target medium mob. The dot damage is the same, so the dot damage is the same on him versus him. If you're doing the little guy here, like maybe it's a soft class in Berserker gear, you're going to hit a lot harder. So you can see this is Aegis happening. Alright, so let's get down here. So that white swing is something you're going to be doing all the time because you want the third swing to heal. It has... It just goes bam, 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 right? It's, this right here, the symbol of fate, looks like this. This is an area effect ability that will heal allies. Which it has a really, really short cooldown. It's only six and a half seconds. It does 1,740 damage. It does healing. It also puts a regeneration buff on everyone. Five sacks of regeneration just for a second and a half. So it's a really quick heal. Um, and the symbol itself is lying on the ground for six seconds, right? And it comes back up at the six and a half second mark. So it's pretty nice. Even if you just go up on White Swing, this guy here, and he'll probably pump me and stuff. And you can start seeing these green numbers in here. The only problem is when you're doing the wind-up, you're not doing any damage. So you can throw this field down when there's no target. So you don't actually have to have a target to throw this thing down. And I wasn't really trying. I was just white swing to use the symbol. So you could be running around on a node and trying to protect it. This is pulsing away. And you're like, let me just throw this thing down and get myself topped off. So you see all this healing happening here? It's just little jibble bits of healing, but it ticks really, really quickly. It really makes a big difference. So that's the second ability, the symbol. Remember, it's being boosted by the, by the build. This other one is a Protector Strike. This is interesting. This uh, protects allies from the next attack. And once they attack you, you swing, and it hits pretty hard. It's 1,100 damage by base. It gives you 33% incoming damage reduction for 4 seconds, which is really nice. Because you're usually going to do it to someone who's meleeing you. And it's going to give you 8 seconds of Aegis, and we saw earlier when we look at the build. It's also going to give it to everyone around you. So what happens with that, we could do it with the Engineer here. Now we'll have to do other abilities, too. You know what, let's do it with the melee guy. Let's do it with the dumb Hammer Warrior up here. Instead of the Engineer is going to run around and throw crap at me. There you go. It looks like this. Boom. So that's how it works, basically. This is going to white swing him, right? 
I'm not doing anything but the number one attack. And then we'll do number three here, if we anticipate him doing the next move. I'm not using any other ability, I'm just using this. I'm just using this one down here. You know, use this. And because you're guardian and you get this block all the time, a lot of times, a lot of his abilities aren't going to work. You see all that block, block, block going off? I have all kinds of ways to heal myself on demand, like this. That's an 8.8k heal. So, just this ability here, you're putting pressure on someone with that. You're going to put conditions on them. They're going to be piddly conditions, but you're still going to put pressure on someone. They, I mean, you're going to probably outlast most people. This is your own demand, you know, point blank heal that you can run in and out of, right? It also does a lot of damage when it first lands. This one here is Protector Strike. It's going to retaliate against them, so you need to time it around when the person is attacking you, like I was trying to do with the warrior. Now let's talk about this next one. So this is a 20-second cooldown. It's a little bit longer. It creates a shield wave in front of you that damages foes while giving protection ages to you and up to five allies. So it gives you minus 33% incoming damage, but only for two seconds, and it will block the next incoming attack. So as you can... Now yeah, well, someone's already attacking him. <laughs> They just get knocked down a lot. <laughs> got, got his attention now. So on demand, what you would do is you would go like this. But I guaranteed to block the next attack. And you can retaliate. Put your symbol down. See this little blue thing on the shield? Kind of looks like this. Right? That's basically this. This is Aegis. Aegis looks like a little blue shield on whatever shield you're using. Alright, so that's that ability there. So that's a longer cooldown. You use it. I use that when I really want to make sure the next block happens, because remember, blocks are going to heal, too. This last one is interesting. This is the Shield of Absorption. A lot of people are like, yeah, you see them standing here doing this. Like, the first year Guild Wars came out, everyone's doing this. They're like, yeah, I'm doing this block move, man. It's awesome. Uh, I actually use it for the knockback. Um, it does... Uh, it does heal, but also knocks people out back. So you can run into a node where people are fighting and punt them away from it, or use it as an interrupt for someone who's trying to uh, do a finisher on their teammate, or they're trying to hit you, or they're trying to uh, snare someone. you got to get them to stop, knock them off a balcony, just get them out of there, like just punt them out. It's a pretty short cooldown, 24 seconds isn't that bad, but it also would do a heal. So let's just let you see what that looks like. I hit this guy once. <laughs> Go boom! So he's punted back. And that gives you a chance to evaluate whether you want to stay in the fight or not. See how the heal's going off the other player? Just put that down with the other player. Well, he's just going to run off his spastic. Must be a revenant. <laughs> So you knock that revenant down. So that's pretty handy in PvP mostly. In PvE, you would just use it to like get something off you. That's the revenant doing the move. We'll get rid of that revenant. He's gonna handle it. So that is mostly what you're going to be doing. Now, the staff does have some utility on it that's pretty interesting. Let's go use the staff a little bit. I always think in terms of the staff as, I need to heal, people are running away, I need to block an opening, I want to waste a little bit of run speed. So the first one has this really kind of silly, uh, ranged, slow-moving projectile to do things. You might as well be in water stance as elements if you're going to do that. It looks like this, right? So if someone's running away, I mean... You can see it's putting the same bleed condition, the same burning condition on them. Um, you know, if you wanted to be really nasty, you could go like this, right? That's 900, 900, 900. For, I'm a healer, okay? That's pretty good uh, burning damage. But this is just a spammable. It doesn't heal, doesn't do anything else. It's got pretty good range on it. You see what the range is like on this. 
Sorry, I'll just wait for him to come back up again. Candle. Here you go. Just about there. Just see this lobbing projector? Looks like a half inflated basketball. Ugh, took forever to get there. Out of range. So that's, if you're chasing someone down, that's really useful. The second one here is this Holy Strike. It marks area for judgment. So this is one of those like ground target area effect abilities. Let's just see what it does first, right? Um, it's going to do damage. It's going to do a little bit of healing. But the healing will be bolstered by what your healing power is. Is any of these dokers damaged? Let's see if he was damaged here. Yeah, Brittany is damaged over here. Who's going to put this down on top of her? See all that healing on her? So it's 250, 50, 76, 211. Let's do it to her again. She doesn't even know I'm doing it. <laughs> she should just stand still. Okay. So that's kind of like a little heal you could do if you wanted to. I mostly use it, to tell you the truth, to do a little air effect damage. Because everyone knows that when you put an air effect damage thing on the ground like that, the, the opposing team sees a big red marker, and they don't know which, which spell it's going to be. So the moment they see the red marker, they're like, oh, start moving, run away, right? This next one is a symbol of swiftness. This is just gives you a bit of run speed. It does damage, so I'd use it offensively more so than uh, to do damage as opposed to swiftness because it's only four seconds, but it will do it for your whole group. So if your whole group was trying to go somewhere uh, and you're playing PvP, you put this down like this, and then when you run through it, you'd have swiftness. You can see right down here is the swiftness, but it doesn't last very long. Now if you run back through it, you'll, it'll uh, boost it back up, I'm not mistaken. Let's put that cooldown to come back up. Okay, we're gonna run through it. It's decaying, 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 decaying. Yep, we got refreshed, but it doesn't last long enough. I've yet to tell you the truth, this must have been nerfed because of World v. World. Um, this really should have been a lot longer. That's why if I ever use this in PvP, I use it like I use it offensively for area effect situations, kind of like this. Remember, I'm not doing damage, but here's a nasty trick you can do. Let's let for this cooldown to come back up. You can use it with this first Virtue of Justice and have a nasty burning effect on everything, which will also give you Reflect. So we'll do it to this guy here. Are you ready? You hit this first, then this, and it'll put a burning effect on the guy. 858, 858. I'm not doing anything else. No one else is hitting that. Golem is half dead already. So, But you have to remember, you're not really an offensive class, but if you did have to do a little damage to something, you're not a complete useless you know, soccer mom or something. So this next one here is some Empower. Um, this is actually just a good old straight up heal. You, you, it takes a long time to cast it. You, you're running along, you hit it. It makes you stop moving automatically. Boom, and it's 20 seconds. It's an air effect heal, but it's just not really strong enough to make a huge difference. But I have done this before and saved a team that was being damaged just for a second longer. The problem is it takes so long to cast that two and a half second cast time, it's like a fireball on World of Warcraft. It's not usually worth it unless after a fight has ended and, and some people are still in combat and you got someone really damaged and they're just running along after being damaged. Then you could go over there and just go like this real quick. So you see how I just healed that dude pretty well there? So that's what you would use it for. You wouldn't use it in a big fight where everyone's the enemy's still alive and they're going to possibly kill your teammates because by the time you get done casting that silly spell, they're dead. You use it kind of like between the fights to kind of top people off really, 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 really quickly. This last one's hilarious. This is called Line of Warding. Um, it only lasts five seconds. It makes a light field, which you know you can combo into, but it's a long cooldown of 30 seconds. Anything that runs into this is going to get knocked down. I can't tell you how many times players see that and they don't realize what it is. So let's just do it with this uh, thief. Right? So we'll just nuke the thief a little bit. She does a lot of projectiles, if I remember. So we're gonna we're gonna run away. Let's see if we get her to chase us. So, <laughs> so she can't do anything. She keeps hitting this barrier. She keeps knocking her down. But it doesn't last very long. But it is interesting to use that in tactical situations. I have situations where I run up a balcony like this. I got someone chasing me. I'm about to get killed, and I just turn around real quick. I just throw that down. It's not a big deal. Now, if she was fighting me in a match, I would switch the shield like this, probably punt her to get her down on the ground, put my symbol on the ground, put my retaliation up, and just start be wailing on her. And if I need to put anything really nasty in here, I can pop this signet to get out of her little air effect junk.
The only reason you're doing this is just to be completely annoying. No, I'm taking like no damage at all. And we haven't actually talked about the sickness. Let's talk about those next. This is probably the best heal in the game I've ever seen. Uh, it's 8.9. It's really nasty. So let's just get ourselves damaged that you see that. I know you saw it earlier. Okay, 12k. Knock down. Let him damage himself on me. Okay, I'm just going to pop it with retaliation up real quick. That was 7.4k. Completely topped me off. So that's not, it's a longer cooldown, so you're paying for the longer cooldown for having a really powerful heal. I try not to use it when I'm in combat, I try to use it at the end of a fight if I really need it. I've always tried to teach myself to not use this heal or rely on it, it's because it's not fast enough, it takes a while to go off. Of course if you want to be nasty you just start doing this, which you activate this. So let's talk about the Cygnus real quick. So the heal is fantastic. Really, really good. It removes the condition, whatever. This is the one I really like. This has two charges, usually. Uh, I think it's, I must have used it in the last fight. So this gives you Aegis for 20 seconds, which means you block the next incoming attack. It gives you 20 seconds of swiftness. Um, five targets around you. Two counts. So there it is, recharged to two. So basically it means you're going to block the next attack. So we would go like this, right? Hit this guy once. Okay, I want to block his next attack, right? I clicked it while it's stunned, which you could do. Block, block, block. And you can actually just throw this on the ground next to you. So the reason why I like that ability is I use it sometimes to do a finisher on someone. I'll use it sometimes I want to be absolutely sure that a group is all hitting me at once, and it's, but I know that the next hit's going to be really, really nasty. Like, for example, like some Berserker's coming after me. I want to make sure he doesn't one-shot me. Let me go over here real quick while he tries to heal himself. So what I'll do is I'll save this to do a finisher on someone. A lot of people have punts, knockbacks, and other classes have runaway moves. So I can go over here. He's going to start hitting me. I'm going to pop this. And I'm going to finish and then the finisher. So if he does attack, it's blocked. See that little sound effect? That means it's blocked. So a well on demand, well timed block between this block the next incoming attack. You're pulsing it all the time. You got this on demand as well. The next one is this Signa Judgment. Reduces the income damage uh, passively, which is really, really great. So it's 10% redu uh, reduced incoming damage and condition damage, but it gives you retaliation for three and three quarters of a second, and it does burning. So the thing about this is nice is against a ranger, one who's going to channel a real spammy move, or if you've got someone who's like, okay, a reaper has gone into reaper mode, and they've frozen you in place, right? If you know that's going to happen, you can hit this because I, it will break the stun. So it breaks the stun. They're going to take all the damage they're trying to apply to you immediately. Or, and when that's done, if you timed it bad, you could then block the next attack back to back twice. You could even block the attack to get the heal off and then if you don't have the punt up or whatever else. It's a good way to mitigate someone else's damage. So let's see if we can use it on him to get him to uh, blow some damage on me. So he took some damage, but not a tremendous amount. And we'll just go ahead and get rid of him. Oh boy. <laughs> this is a trick you can do. You can click on this, but if you're in combat. Oh no! <laughs> Come on, there you go. <laughs> if you're falling to your, to your death in the in the mist, you can uh, click on the waypoint to get back. Let's go back over here, where we were. Almost done wrapping this up. Okay, so where were we? We were talking about signets. There's two more to go, and then we're done. And I'll go run a PvP map, and I'll record that separately. 
So this one here is, like I said, is the retaliation. It's nice, but its duration is really, really short. So you really got to time that one well. This one here is pretty interesting. Improves your power, which is great. Uh, knock down and damage your foe. Um, it also has secondary effects. It's a three second knockdown. This is very funny if you do if you do it like this. So you run up to someone, you're like, hey, boom, knock down, and then punt it away. <laughs> and you just knock someone off a cliff and they're out of the fight. So it's no longer, uh, you know, 4v2. Um, it's completely different. So if you're really, really smart and use all these abilities to your, at your disposal, you can do some nasty stuff because you're really annoying. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole idea of this build, just to be completely annoying, have a lot of fun, have confidence you're not going to die. Um, support your team because all the things you're doing passively are going to help you. No matter what's happening, you just turn that block on. And if you want to be a really nasty, you just put this on. Now, don't be fooled. This is not some godlike character that's going to kill anyone. Most people know that you're a bunker. They know that you're doing this healing. You can be very easily CC'd, knocked down, and destroyed. Because if you're knocked down, all you're really going to be able to do is to click this. You're going to have to be careful about blowing your cooldowns. So the very last one is this one here. This one's really weird. It's a really long cast time again. Okay. Just like this one was... Where is it? Over here. Yeah. This is one and a quarter second. Where's the other one's a long cast time? Uh, you're not doing any damage. You do this one. This one's three and a half seconds. So it kind of looks like this. But as soon as someone hits you, it goes off. The judgment one's like this. The pump one's instantaneous. This is instantaneous. This is instantaneous. This is a cast time. So when you put this up, it's going to give you a power bonus, but does this three second knockdown. The knockdown's really, really nasty. You'll find um, this last one is going to make active healing 100%, periodically heal allies in an area around you while in combat, but fully heal nearby allies. That one's amazing if you're really, really, really smart and remember to use it. But it's one of those things because it's a 90 second cooldown, you're afraid to use it. <laughs> so you're like, I don't want to use this because it's going to, uh, it's going to, <laughs> I'm going to waste it and I'm going to need it later. So that's one of the biggest problems with this kind of ability. But if you if you just blow it, you know, it doesn't really make that big of a difference. The, the passive effect is the periodically healing allies area around you while in combat. That's what the pul one of the pulsing things you see going off all the time, right? So you have to look over here and take, get some damage on me. And we'll analyze this over here in a minute. I didn't talk about courage very much either. This is another on-demand Aegis like that. It makes that really crazy sound. And this is the healing one. It sounds like that. Other players can't hear that sound, if I'm not mistaken. And this one just... It's, no one can really tell, because all the Guardian stuff is all this blue monkey business. No one can really tell any of that's going on. But that was basically the build I had. I, I'm going to go do a match. Um, if, you're, if you've seen everything you want to see in the video, that's great. Let me just keep for one. Um, I'm curious to see how well it plays now that this has been nerfed from 1400 damage down to 671 probably not that good i'm going to cut the video here and i'll uh do a stream when the match actually loads talk to you later